Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about my most recent read, Piranesi by Susanna Clark. So when I say that Piranesi has taken the book world by storm, I'm not lying. This book has been everywhere. It's on the New York Times bestseller list, everywhere on BookTube, Bookstagram, everywhere. People are raving about this book. And I actually have quite a few mixed feelings about this one and I have decided not to give it a rating. So I feel like whenever I decide to not rate a book because I have such conflicting feelings, I think that's the best time for me to sit down and review a book because then, so you as a reader can decide if this is going to be a great book for you. So I want to start off by giving you just a quick little synopsis of this book because I don't think any synopsis could ever describe what this book is really about. And that is the fact that we are following Piranesi, our main character, and we are following him while he explores this labyrinth of a house that is lined with tons and tons of statues and is ravished with floods and currents and waves. Piranesi has taken amongst himself to document every single bit of his adventures. He has a photogenic memory, so he remembers every part of the house. He knows where every single statue is located and he knows the exact time and place that these floods are going to occur. So the one unique thing about this book is that it is written in a journal format, almost as if we were to pick up one of Piranesi's mini journals and read it for ourselves. I wanted to break down the main points of this book and really try to see if you would enjoy reading this book or not because I feel like this one is going to be very polarizing. I feel like once more people get their hands on it, we might start seeing a few more negative reviews because I feel like this book is very niche and I think I'm kind of split in the middle. Like I kind of loved it for a lot of reasons and I kind of didn't like it for a lot of reasons. So Let's get into why. The first thing I want to talk about are the characters that we have in this book. This book do does not have a lot of characters and that is because we're living in a labyrinth house where no one lives. So we only have two main characters that we're dealing with in this book, one being Piranesi. We are told this book is written in a first person style in a journal entry. So we are actually reading all of Piranesi's thoughts as he's living them in the current day. And then we also have another character called The Other. and. This is a term coined by Piranesi, so we don't actually know his real name. But the other is what Piranesi calls his best friend because he's the only other living being inside this world that we know. And so these two characters meet every Tuesday and Friday and they just have a little meeting about everything that they discovered throughout the week. And it just seems like the other has a much firmer grasp of the world around him than Piranesi. All we know going in is that the other is trying. So all we know going in is that the other is trying to get some higher power, whether that be teleportation or mind reading that we as a society see as some higher power or supernatural abilities. So for a very huge chunk of this book, Piranesi is just roaming the halls of this world and we kind of see what it's like to be him day by day. And we know he's been doing this for years on end. I know a lot of people have read this book have fallen in love with Piranesi as a character because he has this sense of innocence about him and it just seems so intriguing. He's just so earnest with everything he wants to do. I feel like a lot of people feel like they w wish they had the passion that Piranesi has about the house that he's living in. It seems something very mundane to us, being like, oh, you're just roaming the halls and like mapping out where you're going. It seems something that's so mundane, but for him, it's his passion. And I think that's what makes Piranesi so amazing as a character. He has a sense of innocence about him. So he just seems so excitable, but he's also very passionate about his day-to-day -day routine. The other kind of has this attitude right off the bat. And I think as the reader, we can kind of see that more than Piranesi sees it himself, which gives this book a really cool dynamic from the get-go. We start to see that Piranesi is very naive and that the other is starting to take advantage of of his innocence. So that gives a really cool dynamic because we're reading one thing through the eyes of Piranesi, but, but we can also see another through our, through our lens. So that brings me to my next point. I wanna talk about the setting of this book because it is so unique. I've never seen anything like this, um, but that is the house. And the house is this character in and of itself because it 
encapsulates you as a reader and you just want to know more of why does this house exist? Why are we here? What's going on? And there's just such a mystery around it. And Piranesi acts like he knows everything about this house, but it's like there's all these questions that he's not actually exploring that we as the reader are like, what is this? What's going on? And to him, it's like, oh, this is just my life. I, uh, I love this place. This is where I'm meant to be. This is, you know, it's so strange. And so I think that's the main thing that this book really has going for it is it just has this sense of intrigue that carries on throughout the novel because you're like, I want, I have so many unanswered questions and the book does such an amazing job trickling in these little reveals to us that it just makes you want to keep reading. So then the other thing that makes this book very unique is the way that it's written. So it is written in a first person journal entry style and it is something that I thought was really fun in the beginning and it kind of became taxing throughout the length of the novel. So I almost feel like this writing style was a little bit of a gimmick and cheapened the novel a bit. And what I mean by that is I feel like there is a lot of unnecessary information that was added because it was written in a research style journal format that I think just could have been eliminated and wouldn't have changed the novel whatsoever. So what I mean by that is Piranesi names his years and his journals in a way that gives them a personality. I think that shows how lonely Piranesi is as, as a character. Because of that, there is whole chapters of how he's named this world and it's something that you can honestly skip over. I, I kind of skim those parts because there is so much information that is handed to you without any context of the world that doesn't seem very necessary. And I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with that, but I felt like it was a little bit of a gimmick. I felt like this book would have been great if it was just a typical prose in the first person. I do want to give you an example of what I mean by this. On page 52, we have a journal entry that's given a list of things the other has given me. Um, I have made a list of all the things the other has given me so that I will remember to be grateful and thank the house for sending me such an excellent friend. In the year I named the constellation the other gives me and he proceeds to give us a list of just mundane items that the other has given to us. And then he goes on, and this is about two to three pages of just a list of useless items that we don't actually, it doesn't really give us context to the story at all. Um, however, it does kind of show that there is a connection between our real world and this house that is given in the story. So I don't think that it was useless. However, I feel like because it was a journal entry, it gave us a little too much unnecessary information. So the reason why I don't think that this book was necessarily for me is because I am not a very poetic person. I don't really care much about poetic lyrics in a song. I don't really care about poetry. Anything that has more of an artistic background, just art at art galleries, I don't really get it. And I think it's more because I'm a, I tend to have more of a logical point of view than I do an artistic point of view just in my day-to-day -day life. I'm a chemist, I'm a scientist, I took all the math classes I could in college and so something like this that is very poetic in writing is something that I don't necessarily enjoy because I just don't get it. <laughs> and so if you're somebody that really likes to overthink very abstract concepts and come to your own conclusion, I think you'll love this book. But for someone like me that tends to read things in a more straightforward way, books like this don't really appeal to me. But if you really enjoy looking up very abstract concepts and trying to interpret all of the symbols in a novel, um, much like how we did in high school, I think you're really going to enjoy this book. For me, however, it wasn't quite my cup of tea, but there was a lot of things that this book did that I really appreciate. I, the writing was impeccable. The characterizations in this book was fantastic. I thought that the concepts in and of themselves were genius. However, just not something that I quite understood. So like I said at the beginning of my video, I'm going to link a lot of reviews of people that gushed over this book because I think that might be a good supplement to some of the things that I just didn't understand as a reader. But I also wanted to make this video so people that are more like thinkers like me 
might want to avoid this book in the future. So that was my short little review of Piranesi by Susanna Clark. If there's any other books that you would like me to review, please leave them in a comment down below. And while you're down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, because anytime you interact with one of my videos, helps other people find my channel. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.